Good morning, everyone. This is the monthly meeting of the Board of Directors of the Council on Aging. Um, may I please have a motion to open our meeting? Motion to open the meeting. Second. Who said second, please? Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Is that unanimous? Yep. Yes, it is at 9.30. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Deb is going to please read the mission statement of the Council on Aging. The mission of the Council on Aging is to advocate for Groveland's older adults to identify their needs, to develop and implement services to meet their health, economic, social, and cultural needs, to encourage maximum independence, and to pr improve their quality of life. Thank you. And before we go on, could we please just um, start with Larry and introduce ourselves to people who may not know everyone? I am Larry McKelleny, a member of the board. Irene Thomas, board member and secretary. Barbara Sanborn, board member and chair. Laurel Pahalski, board member and vice chair. Marie Wall, a board member and treasurer. Deb Stevenson, board member. Linda Brown, board member. Director. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, the minutes of the March 20th, 2024 meeting. Everyone has been sent those in an email. Is there any? Um, may I have a motion to accept the minutes of March 20th, 2024? I, I make a motion to accept the minutes of March 20th, 2024. Second. Second. Okay, is there any is there any discussion of those minutes all, right. all those in favor okay. there are going to be some abstentions correct the two of us okay right you were here right you were here at that meeting yeah yeah okay okay so all those in favor aye aye, aye. The minutes of the April 17th, 2024 meeting. May I have a motion to accept those? I make a motion to accept the minutes of the April 17th, 2024 oh, that's meeting. <laughs> As written. Second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Is there any discussion of those minutes? All those in favor? I have to abstain because I was not there. Aye. 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 And Linda has to abstain. I too. had to abstain. Yeah. Linda, and okay. Okay. So moved. Thank you. Um, director's report, please. Right. Thank you so much. Um, a couple of things before we get into the report. Uh, we've had an exciting start of, of this week. We had some really great programming. We want to acknowledge that Frank, our van driver, this is his five-year anniversary today. <gasps> wow. Yay! Um, so wanted to, to give him a shout out. Um, he was featured in, in the May um, June newsletter as well for people that want to learn a little bit more about Frank. Um, I also wanted to, we had two really great events on, on Monday and Tuesday of this week, which were not included in, in the newsletter or in the report. Um, on Monday was the Memory Cafe. It was our first Memory Cafe here. For those that aren't familiar with the Memory Cafe, it's really just, um, it's the target audience is, is those with dementia and their care partner. So that could be their, their spouse, uh, a relative of some sort, a neighbor, a friend, but really anyone that would like to have just a, a moment of joy and, and relaxation and socialization um, with their um, loved one uh, that, that has dementia. So it's not informational, it's not educational, it's not a support group, but it is absolutely um, just a, an hour and a half or so for us to gather um, those that share lived experiences and can experience uh, time in their day with one another just to relax and, and have fun. And that's a support group right there. Yes, a different people. kind of support right, group. Right. It's not <laughs> led, it's just 
Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. So that was that was wonderful. We had um, I want to say about eleven people um, oh, nice. attended the, this past time, and we have two more coming up. The next one is on June tenth at two o'clock. This is a pilot program funded by SIG um, and the MCOA through the granting process. So we hope that um, we can continue to to do it in the coming years. And then yesterday, um, Carrie Scott, our outreach and food pantry manager, hosted her very first solo event. Uh, she had a coffee hour, really just um, to introduce herself more formally um, about all the incredible offerings that um, the outreach office can have. So everything from faxing documents to helping with applications to, of course, the, the nutritional services and housing and, and heat and so forth. So again, it was really nice, I think, for members of the community to see her in, in a different light as well as one another um, to be able to share stories and know what they come and, and utilize services for. So just wanted to share this things before we get into the written report. Um, the freezer has arrived. It's in the food pantry. It is um, about the, the same size. I know Linda looked in. She goes, is that smaller? Uh, it's not smaller. We did absolutely want to be conscientious of size, um, but we don't normally... It, it, it is... It, Number one, not smaller. We didn't want it to be giant because we also want to be mindful of, of our space and, and utilization of it. And freezer items we would like to see rotate pretty often. Um, so it fits our needs, but glass door so people can see through it um, and shelves so that people don't have to bend over and, and dig. So <laughs> we're very excited about that. Again, that was funded through the, through the SIG grant um, offered by the MCOA. The tent is up and running um, off to the side there. We've already had um, classes under there as well as the Goats to Go programming. A lot of fun. I wanted to confirm the golf carts are a go. Thank you for Irene for mentioning the school probably has a golf car. Um, we are being charged but a nominal fee and, and I think well worth it to, to offer that service for our engagement celebration. And then um, I have attended a few professional development opportunities. So I put in a quote here from Dr. Catherine Esty, since professional development was on my mind, that the key, to, the key is to stay engaged with life, to keep learning, to keep growing, um, Catherine Esty. So again, she is our keynote speaker for oh, engagement. <laughs> mm, I was looking at this. Okay. For financial things, um, again, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. The fiscal year for, for the town is wrapping up. Um, we, you know, I put down here a few of the contributions that, that we've received um, in regards to expenses, just all the, the standard telephone bill, programming expenses, and so, so forth. Um, I do hope that at the next meeting in June that we'll have a more detailed um, plan for the FY25 year, which will um, allow us to plan more efficiently and effectively for the upcoming year with the real goal of knowing um, to give a little bit of autonomy to our team members to say, this is what you have for your budget for XYZ program and, and, and let them run with that, um, certainly within means. But, you know, so it's not a, a micro um, management situation and we can go from there. Any questions on finance? The um, numbers are at the end of the packet if you wanted more in detail. Um, may I ask, are you losing sleep over any particular line item or area? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I feel like the, this year was, was, was good. You know, certainly I was walking into it with, with a clean slate, not really knowing what to expect. I think, you know, as... Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> okay. Uh, for God's sake. It's okay. As um, now, as I will have been here for just about a year, I have, you know, even 
more things that I know we can accomplish and want to accomplish and, and, and to be able to put them within budget is always difficult, not, on, not you know, certainly doable, but it's always, you know, uh, how do we get the most out of, out of what we have? Um, but nothing too much other than, you know, we, we do not have any expenses paid for by the town. So the town pays for all of our salaries, which we are, are very um, appreciative of, but no Next programming year. budget for FY25. Right. Um, so, but we'll, we'll okay. make it. And we're almost, we're yeah, almost or, used or van family. expenses. Yeah, and so we have at this point used all, all of those expenses, um, which reminds me, I, I neglected to put in here, but I had spoken to a couple van or board members that there's a couple of scrapes that I really wanted to get fixed on the van. For this year, we got a quote. I think they assumed that insurance was going to pay for it, uh, which I, I don't, you know, they won't. Um, so it was, you know, a, a hefty price around the five thousand seven thousand dollar mark i can't remember which right now so hoping to um go out i i think just touch ups make sure that it doesn't get um rusted on it will, will be enough they're in they're not like right in sight one of them's really on the top and the other one's like on the very bottom so you know we'll make it look nice but i don't think we need to make it look five thousand dollar nice <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so those those are nothing too big i'm excited i'm mostly excited and and time is always the biggest uh hindrance i guess <laughs> um so uh, assistant director report from, from Nisha, you know, she touches on a lot of upcoming things. Um, ice cream social, which we know we did not get the date um, published in the newsletter. It has been confirmed um, with the police department who is sponsoring that event to be Thursday, June 20th at one o'clock. It will be under the tent. So definitely let us know if you're planning to attend. We'd love to see everyone there. Um, a couple of, of upcoming um, events will be the Older Americans Luncheon celebrated on Tuesday, May 21st. First, this is sponsored by the Friends of the C uh, COA. Um, it will be a trivia and tunes luncheon. Nisha found a, a wonderful um, vendor who will be a professional uh, <laughs> asking us trivia questions and, and play some music in between. So it should be a really, a really fun fun event um, and then we saw nine new members um, join the, the council on aging in April and we're still getting key tags out there to existing members so all in all um, 20 key tag members um, were distributed uh, in April as well mm. so great thanks again the numbers are are there um, you know, if you were to compare March to April, certainly March we had the Maria Stefano's event, which gave us a big bump, and now this is sort of, sort of saying. And we also didn't have a, a luncheon because we used our community or our volunteer um, appreciation as the luncheon. So again, that sort of distributes numbers a little bit differently. But things are going great. Yoga numbers have, have been up. Um, all of our rides or all of our van trips are booked and, and having wait lists. So uh, things are going well. Um, I mentioned the trivia luncheon for upcoming events. Also, tomorrow, Thursday the 16th, we're continuing with the door to door service to our neighbor's table, um, which is a, um, a food pantry, an open choice food pantry over in Amesbury, and, and our partner in stocking food here at the, the Groveland COA food pantry. It is not. Um, <laughs> income um they don't verify income so anybody um is more than welcome to to go over to our neighbor's table to ride the van um certainly you know older adults 60 plus and or those that, that have a disability are more than welcome to join us just need to let us know so that we can pick you up um, van departs at 10 30. 
And then also next week is the Women of Bradford Academy. A presentation um, by the Buttonwoods Museum is taking place next Thursday, May 23rd at 1 p.m. So um, again, our, our events for the most part, the events that we hold here are open to any and everyone. Um, so, you know, if you have friends that, that live in surrounding towns, you can invite them to, to join us and uh, the more the merrier. Yes. Is there a charge for the band when they go to a neighbor's table? Or no, not? no charge for um, going to the grocery shopping. So there's no charge for the Wednesday van trip to um, to Market Basket over at River's Edge. No charge for going to our neighbor's table to go get groceries on on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you. Any thoughts or questions on upcoming events? We are, um, you know, in line with our budget, we're going to um, plan um, the year ahead. We're going to try to look at it a little bit more thematically, not that everything has to fit within a theme, but um, a great way to, to organize us. Uh, and so we're going to look at that and definitely want the voices of, of our community served, of older adults in that conversation. So do stay tuned about how we can, can make that happen. But yeah. As always, though, definitely open to any suggestions at, at any point. You can email me, stop by, whatever you'd like. Um, the engagement celebration, still continuing to move along. As I said, we have the, the, go, the golf cart um, secured, so that'll be great. We have the flyers. You all have the flyer out. Um, we started posting them um, in and around the town. The uh, postcard is at the the printers and they will deliver it to the post office so it will be hopefully in mailboxes around that first week of June. As we know, it's really dependent on the volume that the mail carrier has that day so everybody won't receive it at the exact same time but ideally going out that first week in June. Um, volunteer, volunteer opportunities, I'm still working on it, um, but that will, will be out. It will be you know, it's a pretty self-contained space. Um, so I feel confident that, yes, we need volunteers. I don't think that if for, if for some reason we had a low count, I feel confident that, that we would be okay. But definitely, it always makes it easier if and when we do have volunteers join us. So still um, waiting to roll that out on, on my end. Uh -huh. Speaking of count, is, is there a limit on the number of people for that day so in the in the dining commons yes. um, the capacity is 135 I believe and you know this is our first time doing it and it's an all-day thing so I don't know right. if I would love my ideal situation is that people come in the morning and they stay, stay. the whole way mm -hmm. because there, there's a lot of really great content and opportunities um, I don't know if that's reality, but so, I hope so. So when people RSVP, they should let you know at least if they're going to stay for lunch, because that will be a biggie. You well, know? yeah, so on the flyer and everywhere else, you will see that if you RSVP, that guarantees you a ticket um, for lunch. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, so, so yeah. people let you know so that, so you're know. not planning. Yeah, We have 150 people, and if people come from 10 to 10 yeah. to 11 and then they leave or yeah. what, you know, whatever. Yeah, so how it will work to try to en encourage people to stay is that w <laughs> if you RSVP, you will absolutely get that, that ticket for lunch. Um, when you go to lunch, you will hand in your ticket. And then at the end of the day, we will use all of those tickets to collected uh, for a couple of, of great door prizes. So stay all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be here. <laughs> And yes. Does you your won't be residency matter for registering? No, we want every everyone to come. Okay. All every from everywhere. <laughs> I mean, and, and it really is resources from from all around. So we do have the Alzheimer's Association, which um, is, is you know services Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Um, we have um, you know certainly community living um, panel. The, the speakers are from here, from Wingate and from Nichols, but certainly what they're talking about is, mm -hmm. is, is um, applicable to anywhere that, that you're looking to live. Um, and then we have um, a, 
uh, about caregiver support. Again, that's really just a resource and hopefully some tools that you can take um, when you go home. So, yeah. Will Dr. Esty have um, copies of her book for sale that day? Oh, you didn't I hear. I was just yeah. going to mention that um, at the last friends meeting, we discussed purchasing um, 20 books, I believe, or 25, depending on the price. There was a vote to spend up to $425 to purchase books to have available that day for people to purchase and have her sign if she chooses. Um, and then we're waiting to order those so that we fall within the window of being able to return after the event whatever books um, do not sell. So yes, there will be books available. Excellent. Yeah. And confirming that's what Dr. Esty wanted. She um, just logistically was easier if we had the books um, ourselves oh, to, okay. to sell. She is coming from Concord and, and we are working um, in the next couple weeks on transportation for her out here yeah well maybe next month at our meeting i'll talk about her book okay and it and the assets and helpful yeah. incredibly helpful parts of her book 80 somethings maybe we could do a book club afterwards that would be that would be scathingly brilliant <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on engagement or thoughts to share? Okay. Um, pantry updates. Uh, during the month of April, we, we served 59 attendees. Again, those um, are duplicated numbers with a around 958 pounds of food. That That is <laughs> down. Um, you know, Carrie and I were, were talking about it. I a couple things one you know we don't know why but we will say that we haven't received any negative feedback so we we did do a, um, a survey with uh, our neighbors table I look through them everything um, was, was positive um, there wasn't any feedback for us to, to take on that other than you know the making sure it's a variety and and, and smaller portions were, were the big pieces of feedback mm-hmm was uh, I, I don't remember yeah. but was the trip to our neighbor's table available last month and maybe people went yes. there instead of here yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah, like, hey, yeah I, absolutely a bigger um, uh -huh. variety or whatever you're right and maybe they went there instead of coming here I'll look at that yeah yeah I mean I'm <coughs> yeah so that would definitely attribute to to some i don't think the whole amount but mm. but definitely but to, some. to some um so we'll we'll keep inquiring and, and being curious and definitely you know for people out there know that it's available again not not income eligible base but anyone 60 and plus that, that feels that they um, would benefit from the support of the food pantry um are, are more than welcome to 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 visit even if you just want to check it out and, and see what it, it looks like um, before you you go ahead and take take anything but it's it's there really um, to, to be a support you know whether it's just you know this week is, is really hard and I could use milk you know because I can't get it otherwise um, we have it you know so so come on down um, same same um, needs as, as last month we put down um, just laundry supplies and and V8 juice are um, are what people are looking for mm. so, <laughs> you know maybe like the cans or, or boxes of V8 um, are, are appreciated any questions on the food pantry Things have been going really well, I would just say, in regards to, I feel like, systems and processes with, with the volunteers um, um, have just made, it, uh, just made it, I think, smoother for everyone involved in that process. So really thank, thank you all for making that happen. Um, shared learning and professional development. I didn't put it on here, but Carrie actually is doing um, a, a case management um, online course. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is offered through the MCOA it, and the um, Office of Elder Affairs, um, and that will be completed in June. Um, so that's exciting for her. For me, I had attended um, 
two sessions just happened to be last month. So May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, last Wednesday, mm -hmm. I attended the Older Adult Behavior Health Network Conference. Um, and there's a lot of really wonderful resources, some of which you may have already known about, as did I, but were still nice to be top of mind and, and some brand new ones. So um, just a couple that I'll mention real quick is the eight-week cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. It's free. It's online plus a 15-minute session once a week with, with a therapist. Um, it is for mild, um, mild conditions, a lot of, you know, maybe anxiety, depression, things like that. Um, but cognitive behavioral therapy really helps sort of be aware of your triggers and, um, and then gives you tips and tools on how to manage those, those emotions. So it's a pretty quick intake. You can do it yourself. You follow the link in these sources. We're able to give it to you in the office, um, but a free resource um, for, for anyone that is 18 plus living in Massachusetts. Um, the Massachusetts Behavioral um, Help Health Helpline is available 24-7. It's a phone number for anyone to call that, that would like to speak with a professional. Um, and then the, the senior direct number is also um, available. Um, I think regular business hours, but they, um, they have a wealth of, of resources to share with people um, living in, in Massachusetts and beyond um, for anybody that, that would like to, to call them. So really great things happening there. Um, I would also just note one of the takeaways I took beyond these resources was the importance of intergenerational programming. Um, not only for the social aspects, but they really mentioned it as a, a pipeline of sources. You know, because they asked a couple of, of esteemed colleagues that, that were there presenting, you know, why did you want to go into the, the field of aging? And they were like, at the beginning, they didn't want to. You know, it wasn't really anything they thought of. They just sort of happened into it. And so because in our culture so many times we separate the generations out. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. our grandmothers, you know, we don't, don't bother her, you know, <laughs> don't bother <laughs> him. And so being able to create opportunities where um, the generations can see the aging process that we all are going through, um, you know, is, is really a, a, a connecting piece, um, not only for our lives and, and our daily lives, um, but also hopefully to inspire those people that, that will go into the field someday. So I thought that was really nice. And I love the, the idea of the pen pal. Yes program yep. that yeah. yeah I was very excited to write a letter to <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, we started um, the uh, first grade teacher from Bagnell had um, reached out to us about wanting to do pen pals for first graders. So we're, we're starting with just a couple letters as we end the school year, but um, we'll continue. Our hope is to continue next year for the full school year. So mm. yeah, should be fun. Um, and then the second one I, I uh, attended was um, let's talk about it. And it was the, the topic um, surrounding death. And it really was, in essence, you know, by and large, it's, it's going to happen to all of us, right? <laughs> There's no escaping it. And so really just to, to um, how can we facilitate conversations within families um, so that ultimately families are more aware and more at peace um, with uh, with <coughs> with one having these conversations and so that when that time of death comes that uh, um, it can be a little bit, I don't know if easier is the right word, but at least comfort um, with, with moving forward with your loved one's wishes. And I think that, that was that. So again, a really a lot of great um, takeaways um, from that particular lecture as well. Um, that should be shared. That should be a program, I think. Yeah. In the coming year. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it nobody wants to talk about it, but like you say, we're all going to go sometime, and yeah. I agree. I think that sounds wonderful, and quite often, um, the kids especially, they don't want to bring it up. Yeah. They might want to talk about it, but they don't want to bring mm -hmm. it up. Yeah. So if the the older um, family members bring it up, then it kind of opens the door for 
Well, I'm so glad we're talking about this. Yeah, so, yeah I absolutely. Great. I think it also, I think we mentioned this one other time a few meetings ago, that I honestly think it would be very helpful to have a program that talks about different burial or cremation or options as well, because, you know, that's one thing that, you, you may talk about your, you know, you want a DNR, you have a living will, but I think that's wishes. another thing that people could stand to get good information yeah. on, you know, yeah. like, Absolutely. I think something like that would be really good. Yeah. Good. Well, our theme could be death. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It could be death by chocolate, and then we could have good snacks. <laughs> well, there is a national program about let's talk about death over dinner. Yeah, there you go. We can yeah. do it. Yeah. I like death chocolate. chocolate. So <laughs> Preparing well for the end of life. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I recently bought a book from Amazon about... Um, putting things in order for your yes. loved ones. You yes. write down all your insurance policies and your health yes. information and your mm -hmm. wishes. And um, I told my kids that I had bought that and was working on it and, and they thought that was great. So yeah. maybe even if we um, bought a few copies of a book like that yeah. mm -hmm. and had them available for people you know, to purchase if they want, they might not even know they're out there or people might not have access to you know, Amazon or to mm -hmm. a bookstore, um, but it's a great, um, resource yeah I have um, they gave me a list that they, that they use but definitely that that sounds good we could perhaps make that more public of, of resources that we know of that people have had good experiences mm -hmm. with so and yeah. even pre-planning your funeral yeah. I know you know I, I've been asked to come to a funeral home and you know get it all set up uh-huh my husband of course is not ready for that yet right. he's one that doesn't want to talk about it yeah. We're going to live forever, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah. No, it is hard. It's a lot I of think. stuff. It keeps the stress off the, the yeah. family. family yes. yeah. mm -hmm. It really does. And I yeah. think that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just take stress off of them and have your wishes obeyed. Exactly. I think that's it. Yeah. Right yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you um, for that feedback. So look, looking forward to those conversations in the future. <laughs> yeah, and and mm -hmm. I have family coming over this week, and I was like, maybe we should talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me read a few books on it. <laughs> um, but last but not least, definitely wanted to, to say thank you so, so much to Larry for, for taking the lead on, um, on getting the tent set up um, last month. Um, everything from from washing it to setting it up to saying oh it's too windy to set up today let's think about safety and, and do it another day we had um, over the three days that it took for the process of the various steps we had 20 20 people show up so um, thank you Larry for making it happen M many hands make light work yes. and uh, <laughs> we had some great helpers uh, wasn't all me but you coordinated yeah Important coordination. That was all from me, but again, more than happy to answer any questions if you like. Are there any other questions, discussion on the director's report before we move on? Thorough as always, just gratitude. Yes, very, very well done. Yes. Thank you. Um, under old business, I just wanted to touch base quickly on the um, ongoing uh, quest for uh, building a senior center. It's always on the burner. It's not necessarily the back burner. It's a, it's, if there's four burners on a stove, it's on every single one. Um, but we do have, um, I don't know if people were able to watch the uh, Meet the Candidates night, but there were a couple of selectmen candidates um, at that that expressed, you know, recognized the need for a senior center and recognize the fact that we cannot depend totally on the taxpayers to fund it. It's, it's too much of a burden that we need to reach out to um, our local congressmen, our state congressmen and representatives for help and organizations and so forth. And two of the selectmen, Ed Watson, who was just recently reelected, and Becky Boucher, who was um, elected for the first time, are both very much aware of and interested in moving forward with the work on a senior center. So we look forward in the future to working with them and other community members as well to to keep that a, f a focus for the group. Yeah, I would thank you for mentioning that, Barbara. I would just add that, you know, or reiterate that <laughs> um, it, it is constantly on, on 
top of mind. Um, and, and certainly Barbara and I meet, you know, um, regularly and, and I know we recently had a discussion on that so you know trying to navigate it I do want to absolutely again confirm that we recognize it would be a, a huge um, burden to, to put on taxpayers particularly our, our older adult taxpayers and I absolutely think that there are other ways to to fund it um, so we will we'll keep keep moving forward on it so. <laughs> Is there any other old business? All right, new business, Friends of the Council on Aging Update. Larry, would you like to have anything sure, to say about I, that? Sure, I would um, be happy to ju jump in here. Um, happy to say that we have um, a new board uh, that, we, that has been nominated and will be elected at the June meeting. Um, I think it's June 2nd or 3rd is the first Thursday in June. Um, I have uh, put my name in to be chairman. Uh, Darcy Lepore will continue as vice chair. Karen Susi has stepped up to be the treasurer and Trudy Dooner has stepped up to be secretary. So we have a full board um, and can't say that without thanking the board that has served so long and so well um, they're stepping aside uh, for a new board to come in, but I want to thank John and Valerie Osborne, uh, Joanna Donnelly, and Lisa Collins for their many, many years of work, along with many other volunteers who come to the meetings or don't come to the meetings and still are there to help out. Um, so I want to, I'm kind of excited to take over. The sad news is that uh, I cannot serve both boards, so I will be submitting my resignation. Uh, this would be my last um, meeting as a board member on this board, but I think uh, I sat in that chair two years ago <laughs> and uh, sat through my uh, first uh, Council on Aging meeting and think of what the seven of us have gone through in that two year period of time and how far we have come mm -hmm. as an organization. It just, um, so we're, we're, I'm not leaving. I will still be here uh, attending the board meetings because I think the coordination between the friends and the uh, Council on Aging is an important um, mm -hmm. element of us expanding and growing and becoming uh, more of an element uh, for the senior citizens of the town. And Larry, I just want to thank you. You have been a really busy bee, workaholic, whatever, on the board. I mean, you have been an integral part of this board. And I know you will put as much effort into being on the Friends board. Because you've already done so much, even not being on the board of the Friends. You have been very involved, uh, help, involved and helpful. And yeah. so. We will miss you. <laughs> well, I'm not going far. I know. <laughs> we will miss Larry on the board, but I was greatly relieved to hear that he, of course, will still be involved, still be supportive, still attend the meetings as a liaison. Uh, he'll be great in the role of chair. Uh, I second his thanks to Valerie and John mm -hmm. Osborne, to um, Lisa, to everyone else um, who has served in the past on the board and done things for the um, Friends of the Council on Aging. We can't exist without them. Um, we certainly need to increase the membership in it and the number of volunteers and the people who attend the meetings and, and actually help with programs. Um, so we look forward to anyone who wants to participate and to increase participation is something that's um, front and, and foremost for right now. So thank you very much, Larry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, any other discussion on the friends or questions? Thank you. Uh, subcommittee updates. Are there any subcommittees who have something to update? Yes, Laurel. Nominating. It is time for nominations. Um, and I've spoken to our people who, you know, are presently on the board. And fortunately, everyone said they would like to remain. Now, if there's anyone else on the board who would like to step up and be chair, vice chair, secretary, or treasurer instead of our existing 
people. I don't know how to say that. Um, say now, because this is when we do the nomination mm -hmm. and we do our voting in June so that in July we will, you know, start the new year. So if there's anyone here, we're not saying that just because, let's say, I want to be, I'll agree to be vice chair again. If you would like to be vice chair or treasurer or secretary or chair, any of you three? No, I will, if, if you want to give up your treasurer, I will yes. take your treasurer Very role. Good. Oh, because I know that. you were not interested. You wanted to, st we got you to stay on the board. <laughs> right, and I just said, can <laughs> I do it for one more year? And she said, okay, but, but, yeah, if, but you, if you, if that would, <clears throat> if you would prefer to give up your treasurer, I will yes, do that. Very good. Okay. okay. Thank you. So Keep it in, on the street. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank so, um, the nomination, we need to vote for a slate. The slate would be chairperson Barbara Sanborn. Vice Chairperson Laurel Pahalski, Treasurer Deborah Stevenson, Secretary Irene Thomas. And I feel it's the best way to just vote for the slate rather than, you know, because that way, unless anyone has objections to that. No? Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Can I have a motion? Oh. <laughs> May I have a motion to vote on the slate of officers as stated? Second. Okay. Now, first, you're making the. Oh, no, I can make the motion. You can second, second it. it. Okay. Marie. Okay. Marie. okay. So. All those in favor? All those in favor. <laughs> or any further discussion? Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Was that unanimous? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. We also have um, a position on the board that is now vacated by Larry. So Linda Workman has agreed, I think. She said yes before, but after the meeting, I don't know. Yes, he's still on. Okay. Linda Workman would like to be on the board. Okay. So um, I'm making a motion to ex. I don't uh, Nominate Linda as a member of the board. Second. Okay. Marie seconds. That, I mean. All those in favor? Or any discussion? Or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we thank you very much. Yes. Uh -huh. My board. So you come next next meeting and, and sit back here. Sit back here. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. That was I, will, I mean, I'm last year that I had. Go ahead. Yeah. Can I, I have a question if you're done with nominating? Yeah. Did you guys ever hear back um, about a bylaws meeting with the no. Selectmen and Finance Committee? No. Reps? No. But on that topic, um, because I was on the bylaws committee, yes. I will not likely be a member of the committee uh, going forward. Right. Doesn't mean I cannot participate. Right. As because you're not on a board member. But, um, right. You know, consider if you want to, you know, I will have position on the bylaw committee and also on the pers personnel committee will need to be filled with somebody else on the board, probably mm. next meeting. Right, right. And I mean, as far as when we do meet with the bylaws committee, um, I mean, bylaws committee, in the, when we meet with the selectmen or a representative from a, I've asked if they, when I sent the email, if we could meet with a representative from the select board, a representative from the finance board, the town administrator, and our um, bylaws committee. Any one of us, we all voted for the bylaws. Any one of us could be there. Mm -hmm. And you, you were very instrumental in helping, Deb. No, Even though you that. weren't like officially, I mean, yeah, because we had two and two on, on different. So yeah, if yeah. you would like to, yeah, should we follow up with them and yank their chain a little? I was going to, I was going to ask if that would be something you feel we should because the elections are over. They've had their first. I mean, last uh, not last night, Monday was their first new board meeting. Um, I think it would be a timely thing. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to, we need to get some direction. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
they're out there sitting. And do we really do we really need bylaws? I mean, that's the first question. Yeah. <laughs> and if we do, then you're saying we yes, we do, or you're asking, or do we? Yeah, I think we do. But I mean, we need to get that because that was one of the questions raised. Mm -hmm. I think at that selectman's meeting was why do they even have bylaws? Right. You know, so I, I think we need to have a discussion and get that moving because, again, we started working on our bylaw review. Oh, it's going to take. A while. So yeah, I mean, we we started this October. I don't remember. But October and November, yeah. we started doing I that. Think you know, we should maybe. Yeah. All right, I will follow up with an email. Thank you. And on our other subcommittees, can we just recap um, who currently is on our subcommittees and see if there's any need to? Um, add people or where Larry's now not going to be able to be on a couple of these subcommittees so the bylaw subcommittee is Deb and Laurel is that correct I guess so right now right now <laughs> yeah I, yeah if she agrees okay, okay. Um, personnel subcommittee was Larry and Irene, Irene. I believe yes um, so we would need someone to take Larry's spot on that personnel subcommittee <laughs> Well, there'll be a, someone sitting in this chair next week, hopefully, or mm -hmm. at some point. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and we can certainly explain. Um, yeah, I think I what think these yeah. do these subcommittees do right. Um, and I think that needs to be across the board for everyone here, unless we do that today. Like, if you want to explain what personnel. No, or should I we think just it's in it's in the bylaws. It's in the, in bylaws. the new bylaws. That's right. Well, it's in the new bylaws, the which new haven't bylaws. been approved <laughs> except by us. <laughs> so. No, but the definition of what the subcommittees yes. do, you know, probably yes. wouldn't change. So we and are we do, in we'll fact, send you um, that or uh, email. Uh, Alyssa and Larry and myself. Larry, in his capacity as um, chair of the Friends, myself as capacity of, of uh, chair of the board. And Alyssa are meeting after this to um, formulate welcome packages for our new board members and the bylaws oh, will good, be in there um, and several other things so we'll make sure that our new member Linda gets one of those and that will include a list of you know all of our subcommittees and what they do mm -hmm. um, so we good. can address that again at the next June meeting about um, our subcommittee list and and who would like to be on each one but just continuing with the list that we currently have the finance subcommittee that was Deb and but you're gonna need someone because it was treasurer plus a person so now if I'm treasurer I can't also be plus the person she could be the plus person yeah okay if you're willing unless somebody else will I mean just switch unless so, somebody Marie else wants it. is that what I heard yes okay instead of Deb well, it well, says it's the treasurer. treasurer has to be so on I it. I believe the way we wrote it was the treasurer's on it. Okay. And then one other person. Okay. So the same two people, just different hats. Got it. Roles. Okay. Um, what am I forgetting for subcommittee? Bylaws. There's another nominating. one. Nominating. nominating. Thank you. That was the me nominating was Laurel and, and Deb. Linda. No Deb. I kind of just took <laughs> over this time. Right. Was there anything else under subcommittee updates? As I said, we'll move on with this next month. Well, we still had the question on the table what does the personnel committee do? Mm. So, according to the bylaws and real practice, <laughs> the personnel committee consults with and supports the Council on Aging Director in personnel matters. matters and the committee also is responsible for preparing the director's performance evaluation in accordance with the approved town personnel policies and procedures. Ooh, so where that's coming up. That's coming up, and that's our monthly discussion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need it. Yeah. On the so do we oh, yeah, keep that in mind as we next oh, you'll be back on the agenda, I oh, guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, future programs. Alyssa has 
already addressed some of that in her director's report. Is there anything else to be discussed about future programs? No discussion no, on that? Okay. No, we'll wait till next month. Yeah. Uh, discussion of monthly meeting focus area for the board. Uh, annual performance review process for the Council on Aging. Alyssa, I know you um, presented quite a bit of um, information and materials on that. Would you just like to touch on that? Yeah, so I can um, go briefly through the, the packet, the annual review process. Um, so I will, um, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally think that um, not, not only as, as somebody in a leadership role, but, but someone who, who also receives um, an annual review and critique of my own performance, that they're just really beneficial. Um, beneficial for, for growth as an individual, beneficial um, for the relationship between you know, manager and employee, and, and beneficial for the organization as a whole, um, making sure that we are all three of those overlap and are aligned in, in moving forward. Um, definitely acknowledge that perhaps it can be a stressful and, and triggering time. That, that's really not my intention as, as, a, as a manager, and, and I've tried to convey that um, to the team, but, but certainly our feelings are our feelings, and, and we'll work on that as, as we go degrees. forward. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think one of the um, key benefits in the way I like to do them is the the self is the self review for for the individual um, because as each person on the team has done tremendous work and while as each manager thinks that we know a lot of what they do and we should um, that this is really the time for that individual to not be humble and and to really shed a light on all the accomplishments that they've had and successes and areas where they feel proud um, and that gives them space to do so um, in a way that perhaps they not might not feel comfortable doing otherwise um, so i think that's that's one of my most um, exciting parts of, of, of the review process. And so I did tailor it a little bit for the van driver, knowing that they, their role's different certainly than, than ours, but there's a lot of overlap too. But I, I, I'm not sure I included it in the email, so I did print them out for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, did. you did. Um, okay. And then of course, the, the other piece that goes hand in hand is, is the review that, that the manager in my case would do of my direct reports. So for the Council on Aging, that's the assistant director, um, the food pantry and outreach manager, then the two van drivers. Um, again, I find it exciting, um, one, because this isn't new information overall, I hope. <laughs> you know, and, and as I told them that, you know, take one they all have a copy of, of both documents so if there are any surprises let me know now ahead of our meeting that we're set in july um so that we can talk about it and, and ease the mind um but you know we we do meet regularly you know one-on-one -on -one, um at least the assistant director and 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 outreach manager so these are things that are in continuous and part of the conversation. Um, areas of improvement, areas um, that they are excited about, and so it's nothing should be brand new. This is just a really nice way to wrap up the year <laughs> and, and, and to put closure on it mm -hmm. um, as, as we move forward. And, and part of the review process, of course, is, is setting those goals, setting those goals for us as an organization and, and setting those goals as, as an individual. Um, each, each role has a, a, their own template for the um, performance review. You have copies. I won't go over it in detail, but it is on on five on a five point scale. Um, last year, I I had suggested doing a four point scale because I 
traditionally in my career have really seen value of saying full-heartedly we're leaning one way or another um, for the performance review as we continually grow myself included um, I think having the ability to be a little bit more granular um, where things aren't so cut and dry in our personal growth is, is beneficial. Um, so that was a change for it uh, this year. The town, as um, mentioned in the bylaw conversation, does have the form um, at the meeting last year. It was said by town administrator that we can adapt it to be specific for the role of the, of the department. So certainly took the key um, elements so they are all still there, um, but then put in uh, text to really define what that means for this particular role. Um, clean workspace is going to look different for the van versus here in programming, or you know, versus the regulations in in the food pantry office. So we we named those things, but did um, were consistent for both the the categories that the town offers as well as the values that we hope to. Um, consistently express uh, uh, across all the all, all the roles here you know punctuality professionalism and so forth um, that's a big big overview I'm more than happy to talk about it in depth and any questions that you have the team um, was first made aware about it in in late April at this point everybody does have all the forms in hand um, we will do the performance reviews um, that third week in July um, and with exception of our food or our outreach and food pantry manager she will be coming up on her six months um, as of June 5th so we'll I think June believe 16. doing it on June 4th will be her review so, I think they're fun a great <laughs> tool well and looking and forward to it. I I think they're an excellent tool. What you have written is, you know, within all of the framework. They are lined up with the job descriptions. Yes. Sometimes that doesn't happen. And I think this is excellent. One well, thing that, I was surprised yeah, yeah. when I'm reading the van driver. So Frank does over and beyond van driving. Like I'm saying, when we have our your luncheons here, he's setting up tables. I'm like, where does it say set up tables? <laughs> Well, so, so I, think, of I think that would too. be with, with, with all of our roles, oh, yes, right? Yes, so, yeah, yeah, this, but yeah I mean, absolutely. Yours is like kind of program. His isn't really program. Mm -hmm. the, the van drivers aren't program. So that comes with programming kind of, but yeah. I know, like, but wow, I he, would... I, I'm just, and I, I counter just to acknowledge, you know, when, when Nisha and or I help with, with food pantry orders or when mm -hmm. Carrie helps, you know, set up for social programming, I think, um, you know, it's one of those things I, we, we of course all appreciate when, when people go above and beyond. Absolutely. Should that be the expectation? No, no, this no. Is, I am and saying so this is yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so that's that, why it's oh, not on oh, here. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's a part of his job description. And I'm, yes, I should have acknowledged the others yeah. too, but yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, so I think overall, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, do we have a plan, personnel committee, or what's remains of it for Alyssa's review? Because that should be done on the same schedule, correct? Yeah. Yes. And it will be your one year anyway in July. Yeah. So. Yes, we do have a plan. Okay. To uh, thank you. F uh, my question was, do we have permission from the town administrator to adapt appropriately to the position description and um, what we observe and what we feel needs to be um, assessed? Mm -hmm. So. We did Alyssa's probationary, though. Don't we already have yes. that? Yes. From we did, probation. but we didn't we follow strictly the towns because it was for the first six months? Right. So now we have the opportunity to make it more... Um, tailored. More tailored. Thank you. That's the word. More tailored. More fitting to the position. 
and its description. So we will be doing that. Okay. We have an excellent template. Yes. Um, you. <laughs> yes. Fantastic job. Thank you. Appreciate all the hard work. Of course. Of That's. Course. And and this is what we needed. To, this is what I needed to see, certainly, to move forward. And are you going to do as you did with the probationary and circulate it to all the board members for input? Absolutely. That would be a plan. Yeah, that okay. would be part a step in the just plan. so we know because it Absolutely. is. We want to keep on this schedule. I think that's critical. I think it's very, very important not to let it. Correct. Right. I think you have to do. It's not fair to the employee. Yeah. if you don't do it on a schedule so just so that we all know right have the expectation that we're going to be seeing this right at some point and to kind of know okay we need to be able we need to focus on it when we get it right is why I asked and so I have a question for you Alyssa which is with this self review so would you be filling yeah. one in and then could we also be talking with you personally to get any more clarification or Absolutely. information okay before mm -hmm. this gets developed mm -hmm. I, I want to collect all the mm -hmm. most relevant um, information before we sit down and try to flush this out I say something else that that I did Good. for the more? assistant director role specifically um, is that we well I created a, a list of everything I I am aware of that that role currently does and or would like to see as covered in that position um, and so I shared that with with Nisha and, and invited her you know to, to edit um, to add you mm. know additional things that, that I might not see um, what she does just so I, I I feel that job descriptions they're fluid because they they work with the with the current needs of the community and they also work to the assets of the team and so if we have somebody on the team that's a really expert and X you know then somebody else and that wasn't really a big strong you know then things are going to shift um, so I personally like to review those once a year um, as I had written the the van and, and outreach position um, you know quite recently we haven't done that as of yet but with Nisha we did before um, actually just this week you know we shared that document to make sure we're aligned on um, mm -hmm. what the role actually does day to day but, so I can can do that Great. as well thank you Any other discussion on the performance review process? All right. Uh, our okay. so you is, want to say well, if Larry is now, off, I mean, is it only Irene going to be on personnel, or is Larry going to be able to assist? I or? would not be able to participate in the evaluation itself, but I would be able to assist in developing the tool as a community. Mm -hmm. Right, and but I think it would be. Anyone, you know, be wise to, to complete the committee, have a, a second board member. Right, that's where I'm getting at. So is there anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I can see you're trying to keep your hand down. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Well, as the chair, I understand I can be an ex officio Indeed. member, so yes. I'm certainly happy to, to do that to help with the process. Um, mm -hmm. But if anybody else would like to join us, more hands on deck. Even better. Linda, thank you very much. Here we go. <laughs> Yay. All right. That settles that. Thank you. All right. And our topic, our focus topic for our next meeting will be community partners and elder law. Um, is there any other questions, discussions on new business? My only question is, we need to make sure that Linda gets approved by the Board of Selectmen. Don't we need to get that on agenda? Yes. Before Ooh. she can do anything? So we need to get that thank scheduled. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. I will when I do my follow up on bylaws, I'll also say yeah. agenda. Linda. Because I don't think she can be officially a member until that happens. Exactly. She could still be on the committee. Added. She could still be on the committee as like Larry right. would be. And Larry 
you're good until June 30th anyway, right? Still on the board. I would assume that as soon as I am elected chairman of oh, the other that committee would be... that I would not be able to serve on both boards. So right. my resignation right. would be effective that date. Right. June, I, second? June second or third. Ask a, a clear, like a, a genuine question. Question <laughs> is is where is that <laughs> outline that that a town board member cannot be part of a essentially another nonprofit board? <laughs> I did ask that early on, um, and. Um, the town administrator checked it with legal, and I was told I could not serve on both boards. I think it's because of the fundraising. Yes, it's. Uh, I think it's the. Con I think it's uh, because of the conflict fundraising of interest piece. kind of thing. Yeah, he link. can be on a committee here, you know, like as a community member. He could be on the committee or not committee. He could be, like I go to the friends meetings, yeah. but I could, yeah. you know, the same idea. But um, yeah, you can't twix and twain. Like right. library is the same thing. There's a friends. And then there's, you know, the board. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I just, I totally get it. I'm just in my mind, you know, the the fronts are their own separate nonprofit it's, but entity. It's the, it's, it's the ethics of the fundraising. Yeah, yes. yeah. Right. And they're just an FYI. Yeah. So there is um, a new board handbook coming out from the MCOA, and, and maybe that also might provide some Ooh. insight too. I was just curious. I knew, um, board this board or friends board um i believe it'll be coa board um handbook yeah well, that not would be, like uh, not a handbook like a Bible. but yeah. like a how-to or best practices kinds of oh. things they're unveiling it today as no unveiling oh. it tomorrow if you could you know yeah. get great. that out to us because yeah. that would be an important piece yeah with the bylaws yeah. too mm. absolutely very good. All right. If there is no other business, um, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. It's 1037 a.m. Second it. Who seconded it? Linda. Linda. Yeah. Who seconded Linda. that, please? Linda. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.